This week, in a surprise announcement, PlayStation unveiled their next generation PlayStation VR controllers. And as we know from the previous announcement from PlayStation, a new PSVR is indeed in the works, although it will likely release sometime next year. And as we know already, it's going to be compatible with the new PS5 console. We still haven't seen the headset itself, but we did get a look at the new controller design, which does hint to some other interesting features about the headset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list some of the features that they've advertised in the blog, and then you can give me your thoughts on each one of these kind of features, and we can discuss them individually. So starting with one of the most interesting ones uh, is adaptive triggers. So each controller will include an adaptive trigger that adds palpable tension when pressed, similar to what's found in the DualSense controller. So I, I don't know if you guys have played around with the DualSense, or am, am I the only one? Uh, the new one, the PS5 DualSense. Yeah, PS5 yeah, controller. No, I haven't felt yeah. it. I've, I've just seen all those videos, so I've, I've felt it with my eyes. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so, so to give you an example, especially for those of you that haven't seen this technology in action, in games like Call of Duty, for example, when you pull up your gun uh, to, to your sights, you'll feel the tension in the trigger. Uh, and then when you pull the trigger button to, to fire it off, it will kind of bounce off and kind of give you that rumble feedback on your finger. It sounds some. It sounds like something that you'd be like, eh, it's kind of like gimmicky. Mm. But when you try it, you're like, holy crap, I want this in like every single controller that I own. It really is that good. And certainly when mm. I picked up the DualSense for the first time and we kind of had rumblings that, you know, PlayStation will bring out another VR headset in the future, I was like, we need this on the next gen PSVR. So the fact that they've added this straight off the bat into the new PSVR 2 controllers, I'm beyond hyped for it. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Hi. So that is the adaptive triggers. It's that's all. Be next I, level. That's all I got to say. I mean, it's, it's just um, tactile is necessity for next mm -hmm. for next gen VR. Yeah, um, something so small like that can really make a big difference. You know, even like Zim said many times, a small amount of haptic feedback in VR goes a long way, right? Yeah, I, I think then... if you if you actually pay attention to the haptics that are in modern controls, right? Doesn't matter what system you have, if you pay attention to how many places the haptics kick in and give you that experience, that feel. If you then play with an experience where you don't have haptic feedback, it feels like dead in your hands. It, like, yep. it really feels like all you're doing is wiggling a stick and pressing some buttons. It, it's surprised how unalive that then feels. So this next grade of tactile for me is like ultra, this is probably the, the number one feature which excites me about PS VR 2. Yep. The, the neat thing about it is it's just bringing in another sense into virtual reality, right? You have your, your eyes, you have your ears, that has already gone into virtual reality. Now it's also bringing in, you know, more like the tactile kind of feedback. Next, we, mm -hmm. we need smell, you know, get Shmell that into smell vision. as well. <laughs> yeah. Nostalgia rift, right, Sim? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, as well as adaptive triggers and getting that feedback, you also have haptic feedback in the controllers themselves. Uh, they'll be optimized for the form factor that they've produced. Uh, and they say that it will make every sensation in the game world feel more impactful, textured, and nuanced. So that's going to be typical Rumble, I would imagine. I don't think it's going to be anything gonna crazy. Going to be uh, Joy-Con uh, Ice Cube uh, stuff? Maybe, maybe. We don't know. They haven't been too descriptive in what it can do, but that would be pretty next level if they could pull yeah. that off because the Joy-Cons I mean, do 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 something very special. I mean, honestly, if you if you look at of what you played so far in VR, um, I see a lot of developers not really using the haptic feedback in the controls that much. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there there's so much you can do with that. You know, like little little sensations can be you know really translate into very cool stuff. Yeah, I think with the adaptive triggers, I think that offers more creativity. Yeah, the combination. Though. So yeah. I think we'll see some interesting stuff there. Yeah. Uh, you also have finger touch detection the controller can detect your fingers without any pressing in the areas where you place your thumb index mm. or middle fingers and this enables you to make more natural gestures with your hands during gameplay yeah. now from the impression that i get from reading that which is like verbatim from the blog is that it's capacitive touch sensors yeah. not necessarily the the tech that we saw previously in the prototype that we showed off on the show a while back yeah that had full finger tracking. This sounds more like capacitive touch like we see in the Oculus Touch controllers. Makes sense for a consumer that? product. That's what I would expect. They're kind of coming up to par there with Oculus's controllers then. Uh, yeah. On the other side, if you, I mean, having played with the Valve Index, it's not like I feel like it's a must. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, Oculus do that hand I thought I thought well. it was going to be a must. I thought when, when the Valve Index was announced, like, this is going to be, like, we don't want to get rid of that. But now after playing a few, nah. Yeah. 
I think no. the problem is that there wasn't enough content that really no. leveraged that technology. You know, we exactly. had Half-Life Alex, we had the Hand Lab uh, demo that was made by Cloudhead Games, which was also pretty great. Yeah. But there's not really many other experiences that really leverage that no. technology. It's, no. it's very sure. much, I would call this an icing on the cake. In other words, once the cake of VR is ready, we can mm -hmm. layer on the icing. It's very similar, unfortunately, as an audio file. It's very unfortunate, but a lot of games don't take full use of full stage 3D spatial audio. I mean, and when you put yeah. that in there, it really makes it, right? And it's the same thing here. Like to, to be able to have, again, full finger tracking in VR, it's the icing on the cake. Like it's it's another final stage evolution, yeah. right? For your Pokemon. So that's what we want True. Is, is, is just that last mile. But I think but, it'll come back. I just don't think now is the right time. It's very similar to what we were talking about with rigs. Like it's all about, it's all about timing. And I think right now we don't want icing, we want cake. Yeah, but yeah. The, the interesting part, if we talk about gestures and stuff, so we can do that with the Valve Index now, we can do that with the Oculus uh, Touch controllers, you know, you can just do a thumbs up, stuff like that. But there haven't been many games where it's getting used. For example, in Lone Echo, if you uh, communicate with the characters, you can do a thumbs up and stuff and they respond to that. Uh, at mm -hmm. least in Lone Echo 2. I don't know if it also was in Lone Echo 1. But when I played the demo, you could do a thumbs up and they would respond to that. So you could just communicate with that. And you're I like think the with only Sony has ever played Lone Echo 2. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's but that's what... an example of like what you can do with gestures than just they're there and no one really implements them in, in, into yeah. any game. And no, I think I, Sony, I agree. Sony will be able to turn a thumbs up into things that you just that I don't even know yet what Three it's going to be. thumbs, but, triple yeah, thumbs they're going to do something. No, but they're going to do something cool with it. I don't know. Maybe you could create a puzzle game with gestures, for example. You could do that. That's a good I point. don't know. Yeah, but I, like the thing is, I think it's a huge pet peeve of mine uh, when it comes to VR implementation. Like when you can't do whatever, the peace sign or a thumbs up in any game, I feel like you've cut my fingers off. Like, mm. allow me to do the thumbs up, especially if it's social it's not, or multiplayer. It's not, it's not universal. It's not universal. It's, Some games no, where you try to squeeze your hands, it doesn't work. But yeah. yeah, but it's just what I'm saying is they have, like, uh, Oculus had the technology, Valve has certain technology, but no one really uses it in the games to their full potential. And I think with Sony, they will do that. I'm almost sure they are going to do that. We have seen but, it with the freaking I mean, gamepad. I mean, it was just a gamepad. And then a few years later, we were playing Astrobot with it. Like, holy shit. That was awesome. The way they the, implemented the, the, the gamepad in Astrobot course, was amazing. The, the difference is, of course, that Sony has, and Oculus is starting to, it has a, a huge production company of making games, right? You know, Sony Productions, they make so many specific games also for VR. But, so and, and they'll Sony, be able to use in-house uh, yeah. develop software and hardware to produce those kind of things and, and, so and they the, can maximize the, the use of that. And, and the people who work at Sony are gamers. Well, Facebook originally isn't a gaming company. You know, it has to still grow in that kind of, uh, you know. That's why the thumb tracking is so good. That like button. Press it now. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, man, sure. <laughs> so uh, the, next, the next feature, which gives a hint as to what might be going on with the headset, is that the VR controller is going to be tracked by the headset itself. Uh, there's a tracking ring across the bottom of the controller and then that runs across you, your hand. So it looks like it's got hidden infrared LEDs in inside it, like the Oculus Touch. Yeah. So it suggests that we're going to have inside out tracking oh. with the headset as well, because it's going to need to have cameras on it to track the controllers. So it would totally make sense. Or, or do you have to uh, screw uh, light bulbs into it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's just hope that it doesn't have any no, out, outside tracking oh, cameras or any no, business no more like that. I, I was so inside you, out. You know what that like first image dropped, <laughs> and and they weren't showing like they weren't showing so much the front, and I was like, I bet you there's a, a glowing ball that you just screw into the front of it. Like I was <laughs> no, convinced no, no. that it that's what's that. coming. <laughs> it comes with the package. I, I love how these look though. I really do. I think they look yeah, really cool. Yeah. They do look really nice. So they do cool. look really nice. So inside out tracking looks like it's going to be on the card. Nice. It's very good. And also looking closely at the images, there is a USB-C charging port visible on one of the images. So it looks like okay. they're going to have an internal battery that you just plug in and charge the controllers. A bit like mm. what we're familiar with with the moves. Mm. Uh, and I think the other big feature is, of course, thumbsticks. This is the move from PlayStation from the move to finally have parity with what's going on in the rest of the industry with thumbsticks. Yeah. And I think... This is going to be great for us. It's going to be great for consumers. It's going to be great for developers. It's going to be great for everyone because especially from a developer's point of view, can you just imagine what it was like for them 
three years ago when you had Oculus Touch controllers, you had Vive Ones, you had uh, PlayStation Move controllers, all of them significantly different in design yeah. from each other. Now we're starting to see all of these kind of controller designs unify yeah. and follow the same kind of pan. The button the layout is pre pretty much identical on yeah. all these controllers. Yeah. So I think it's going to mean porting games across platforms, hopefully, is going to be an easier process for these Plus, developers. They now made controllers that are for VR. Well, the moves were these ancient things that I don't know when they came out. And they were able to resell them just for their VR system, but they weren't originally made to do VR. So now they finally got to create something with all the knowledge they have and all the experience they have to really create a controller that does gaming. And I think yeah. that's super exciting. The funny thing also is, about this looks... The, um... Go on, Ready. About the about the form factor, uh, I was talking with with Anton uh, from developer from um, uh, Hotdog Sources and Hand Grenades, and he actually said that um, he was very interested in the controller design of it because the way that the controllers are made now, when you bring your hands together, you know, when you when you're playing with the Oculus controllers, you often like bump them into together. Same with the Vive ones, you bump them together. But with this, because the loops go outward, you can actually bring your hands together very mm. closely. Uh, be, almost touching each other without actually like bumping into each other which is actually a really good uh, a really good kind of concept design i mean leave it to sony right to make a to make a gaming controller yeah. that that really uh, is is what we want so i'm i'm very interested in seeing where this goes well, yeah. I, I like like when you when you invent a controller, it's important to to uh, think about okay, what games are people going to be able to play with that, right? And then you create the controller. Well, I've also seen people create the controller first and then think about what games you would be able to play on it. So here, I'm sure they have uh, come up with some new game designs we haven't seen before mm -hmm. that are going to be able to be pulled off with these controllers. I think there is more than meets the eye that we just don't know yet. I we I had um, a tweet from Brandon uh, Latch actually talking about sort of developer response to these controllers. Uh, mm -hmm. He's the man behind Boneworks, if you're not familiar. Yep. And he posted mm -hmm. on Twitter after the announcement this week that they address everything that prevented us from supporting move controllers. Need to get our hands on to make the call. But just by looking at them, I'd say there is a 90% chance we'll support them. So that's, a, that's a hint there that Boneworks may potentially end up on PSVR 2 as well in the future, which is pretty awesome. That's nice. You know, or they create something new. I mean, they're always mm -hmm. like about about trying new hardware and then build something on top of that, yeah. Like the yeah. the thing the thing for me is I think that Sony when they do a controller, like I remember seeing the aim controller and thinking that's really smart. Like you just saw the placement of the various you know the the, the buttons, the trackpad, the form factor, but also the kind of cleanliness of it. Like I like the hygiene of these controllers. They really look sleek. Like they be easy to clean. They're not you know not, they don't have funny ridges all over the place that's like grime's gonna stick in. But also they're really they're really Sony. They look super PlayStation. Like they they really have this look of a patent I saw a couple of years ago where they had these kind of funny shaped controls when they were uh, they were talking about the, the, the DualShock, the new DualShock pad that would come out. And it had this funny, like almost um, manta ray style to it. And mm -hmm. this almost picks up from that. And so I, I really like seeing it. It looks sleek. And someone was taking, you know, from the various pictures saying that they appear to be cut from like the, a sphere. Uh, and that yeah. they're, they're actually quite spherical. And now why is that important? A sphere is actually quite strong in plastic. And so that means they will be more robust than if they weren't, because then you get these plastic stress points appearing within the build. So I like the look of it. It's really interesting. Rowdy, I'm glad you highlighted the point about um, about the controller shape and the fact that you've got the cutaway. It's funny now that the three companies are all playing the game of where do we put the ring? Uh, but this seems like a really inventive change. Um, it's great to have this news so early as well so that we can get excited yeah. about it. Um, yeah. Unlike Nathy, I'm definitely waiting. I'm waiting to, to, until the very last minute to pick up a PS5 and a bundle because the bundles for PlayStation VR were insane. Like the fact that you could get like five or six games together with a console and yeah. PlayStation VR for a price that's 200 quid less than what it should have been. I'm, I'm just I'm wondering waiting. how much of a push are they going to make with this again? Like, you know, like with, with the PlayStation VR, they didn't need these insane bundles, but mm -hmm. we're now a couple of years further. And since I'm, the, the way that I see it now is that even though I just said in the beginning, you know, we, we you know, VR, we don't know what, what kind of future we, we're going to go with it. We keep it in, the, in our hind, in our hindsight, but whatever. 
But now it like I'm wondering like are they like really gonna like push this as much as they did before or like even more because you know more. the industry has changed. So. They're, like... they're already more because like the PS Plus stuff you highlighted it when you were um, when you guys were covering releases that they mm -hmm. had like Farpoint they had, like they're actually now all of a sudden and it feels like they went quiet for at least six months. Yes. All of a yeah. sudden now they're like ready yourself for the tidal wave we've got plans yeah. and and they're that's, making yeah, sure news is hitting well. us regularly which makes me super excited because this is early this is a year before they're going to launch so they want noise they well, want to make they, noise they, they, they go way bigger they go way bigger way bigger. i mean like i i know i, I keep repeating myself with with iron man but iron man didn't come out in 2016 it came out last year it's a freaking huge ass title and and the playstation vr one was already outdated so mm -hmm. i mean that just shows that they're just willing to make and make games and that's what excites me the most it's not necessarily the hardware I'm, I'm sure they know what they're doing with that but the games man like i am just ready to actually play some legit, <laughs> legit solid games that are hours long that are just amazing just that just feel like games right yeah and i feel like that's that's something that i just don't get on steam and it's also something i don't get on my on, on the oculus platform that's something that only Sony has been giving me on on a on a uh, let's say a, a regular base. They were mm -hmm. able to pull it off nonstop. Yeah. So. Yeah, I do. I do totally agree. You know, like if we get Resident Evil Eight, for example, that would be a game changer. Another firewall game with a new aim controller would be a game changer. A new Astro Bot. You know, the, these these are the things that will really make make it blow up. And I mean, I'm sure look at these controllers. Well. We're gonna get Spider Man. Like, the, <laughs> you, can, you can do this now. Yeah. You're gonna get it. Yeah, it's gonna but, happen. But it's funny that, that Zim mentioned about the sphere because they refer to them as orbs, and I wonder if that's going to be a name orbs. for them going forward. The orb controllers, the because orbs. Um, you know, yeah. we've always had kind of had nicknames for controllers. You know, like the the knuckles, for example. And I wonder <laughs> if orb will be something that carries on forward. But I think it's also been interesting from my perspective to like log on to websites like IGN and Gamespot and see them make this announcement, and then go into the comments and see what the community is saying, like the traditional gaming community. And so far, it seems very, very positive, which yeah. I'm really excited about because you know these traditional gamers maybe they don't want to go the quest route because they don't like the whole Facebook integration. Maybe they can't afford a P PC on the high end, but they see this as a nice middle ground, you know, that's a good mm. compromise. And like Nathie mm. said, it's going to deliver the games that they want to play. So I think this is going to be exciting and, for everyone. And a lot of people are not aware of the Oculus Quest, maybe mm. in America, but here in Europe, PlayStation is, is the leader, same with Xbox, you know, yeah. it's something yeah. that doesn't really land here. So so when PlayStation comes out with something like that, they're going to roll it out in the stores. I've Like of all the headsets, I've seen the PlayStation mm -hmm. VR in every store I went to, but the Oculus Quest, I've barely seen any laying around here in the stores. <laughs> Valve Index, of course, isn't in stores. So PlayStation is putting advertisement on TV. Mm -hmm. They will have events where people, if, if let's say the pandemic is over, they will have places where you can try it. I mean, if you went to Gamescom and E3, dude, they were trying to get as many people into all those demos, demos as fast as they could, you know, like mm -hmm. five minutes job simulator, you could make appointments for everything. So yeah, they they like you can already see more people talk about this than when the Oculus Quest 2 yeah. launched. And their their marketing budget is normally very high when they want to push their new technology. I remember mm -hmm. in London they had a an enormous headset yeah, PlayStation at a, VR. the yeah. PlayStation VR headset at yeah, one of the yeah, train yeah. stations, for example. Train stations. And yeah. every every time we've seen PlayStation demo at conventions and stuff, like they really take it seriously. Their branding is through the roof. They give an appropriate amount of time for their appointments. And normally they sell out, like, I mean, they, they book out within within the first hour of a convention opening its doors. So, like, there's a lot of there's a lot of interest there. I agree with you, Mike. I think this next push, this is like, this is now the consumer-centric, the world's now ready for VR, and Sony wants to capitalize on that. And I think, you know, talking about games, because I think, you know, like Nathie said, it's a very important aspect uh, from the PlayStation VR side of things. And I think, you know, the great thing is that, like you say, we've seen some games being added on PlayStation Plus recently. We've had, yeah. uh, what was it, Concrete Genie, and we've also had Farpoint on PlayStation Plus. Yeah. So if you're a PlayStation Plus member, you can add those games to your library now. And I'm sure they're going to be backwards compatible with the new hardware when it finally releases. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, uh, PlayStation are also running a play at home campaign, which is going to give you the opportunity to grab some PSVR games now for free and like you know, add them to your library mm. preemptively for when you eventually get a PS5 or a PS4 
uh, VR2 headset. So starting from next week, mm. the 25th of March, you'll be able to add these games to your PlayStation account and keep them forever, even if you're not a PS Plus member. So there's some pancake games oh. in the mix as well, but the PlayStation VR games are Astrobot, which is phenomenal. You've got Moss, which is also an incredible platformer, Thumper, Res Infinite, and Paper Beast. And you can add those five oh. games to your PlayStation game library now and then play them for free in the future when you eventually get that's oh, thank you for explaining actually, that, Mike, because I didn't I, I didn't differentiate between PS Plus and Play at Home, and I didn't know that this was something that they were doing as as a freebie for others. That's that's a, that's yep. fantastic, especially because a lot yep. of those titles are single player. Like Paper Beast is the perfect example of a of a game that will will eat three hours of your life is really pretty to look at, but you probably didn't want to sink you know sixteen quid or twenty dollars into. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't even think you need any PlayStation hardware right now to take advantage of this offer. So, you know, even if you're just yeah. on the fence, create a free PlayStation account, yeah. add these games <laughs> to your account, you know, and then when you eventually do take the plunge, you've got like five games ready to play uh, before you thumper even... Two, yeah. This, thumper. This, this, this is what I'm saying. Like Sony is, is very generous, uh, rewards you for being their customer, knows what their library exists out of since 2016 they know how to re-advertise them well as i said lone echo nobody knows about you could still advertise great game you could still do that but uh sony just knows everything about what they created and are aware of it but but what i do I... think you're right when you said you know the, the thing is the playstation is you know they've been in the gaming industry for such yeah, a long they're time very experienced they, they execute it very well whereas i think you know oculus they're mm -hmm. still very new you know just recently yeah. we've seen some very half baked games like jurassic world aftermath and yes. tales from galaxy's edge where they literally are oh. half games and i don't i just don't think that that, that that would fly on the playstation platform so much yeah, but we're getting to a point but, now where those kind of things are crucial in terms of sales and where the customer is going to go because where i want to go is where the games are yeah of course but the, the, but the I, thing that I, think, I that i think that oculus does like should do just better on regardless of money is like like revitalize like old titles like if you look at like playstation plus why don't we have something like that on oculus yet mm. like like something that you get like a, a game for free every because, month and that can be like all the title then you can bring like like let's say that they make medal of honor oh. uh you know because nobody is playing it anymore make it a playstation <laughs> plus title yeah. free yeah, for yeah, a yeah. month yeah but that's that's because playstation invented you might want to make they it came up with it so. oculus plus title if you give it to playstation then yeah, but like on one side i mean <laughs> Just pull well, your chain. On one side, I think this, on one side, I, I I get it. You know, I'm missing that two on Oculus their platform. But For on sure. the other side, it's good that they didn't do everything perfectly because then there would be no competition. So this is yeah. now Sony is there, and they offer something better. So they have to step up their game. They can't yeah. just keep going like this and sell part one part two games i mean and th this is why i think the competition will be great although they won't directly comp compete you know there, there's going to be some you know you're going to be able to look over the fence and say what are they doing better okay let's yeah. re let's improve let's reiterate on our design on, and focus on rowdy's idea there so we have obviously steam free weekends for certain games have we had free weekends for oculus home titles my brain's telling me we have in a few they, instances. Um, they gave um, Asgard's Wrath away. Uh, for what reason? I don't know anymore. We couldn't really. That was the celebration. Find out why. That was the celebration of of Oculus Quest Two launching essentially. Oh, but yeah, it was okay. bizarre because it's such a heavyweight uh, <laughs> yeah. title that if you if you have say a Quest Two and a laptop that's like a gaming laptop that probably still won't run you know asgard's wrath no, but, very well but it was a big game that was strength. free yeah uh, that but was no, the one like time all... but like two three years ago didn't no. they do some no, no, no but free weekends no, but not it's, done much. It's, it's rare it's rare uh, maybe steam has done it a few times where they have the you know the demo weeks where you could play all these demos but not necessarily free games only epic games does that on pc but they don't have a vr thing yet but if they have yeah. a vr thing then i'm sure they're gonna rolled it out for the vr titles too but like no we don't I, like I just want to highlight as well like it's not just oculus that are not executing particularly well on games just recently like this whole the whole steam ecosystem is the same right like we haven't seen that really immersive single player story driven experience since alex no. really that kind of touched similar base yeah. i know like medal of honor was close well, there are a lot of zim in enjoyed it but certainly for me it didn't come close well, there are a lot of I indie mean, indie games that that do some stuff but i mean you really have to look for it yourself mm -hmm. uh well you know on playstation you don't have to worry about downloading something that isn't that great it's usually but, very uh, well let's moderated. not let's not forget as well that if, if you want like a like a deep single player kind of campaign 
uh, that doesn't only take money, it also takes like huge amount of time just to develop that, just to develop that. And regardless of that, like, I, I don't think that we'll see, I mean, we maybe start seeing that in like, you know, in a couple in kind of a few years to come, but, you know, to, to develop a title like that, you know, you can't expect that really from like an indie or a smaller studio, even the studios that like on the, are on the Oculus wing right now aren't like the, the biggest studios. Some are getting to that point, but I, like seeing like deep involved single player campaigns. Well, I, I think the, I think the reason why we haven't seen that much is because uh, developers aren't necessarily motivated to make something for the PC VR market. Well, uh, as far as I know, what I've seen from Sony with their ecosystem, developers just want to hop on board and create something where on PC, a lot of the big uh, games we got in the past, like Lone Echo, was because a, a huge amount of money got given to the studios to make a VR game. Well, they weren't necessarily planning to do one themselves. So if that, it, but, but, you know, what like unique, you know, PSVR unique story driven experience have we done specifically seen? Blood and Trace. Uh, Far point. Truth, okay, but uh, you, have, you have like a few of those as well. Far point is another oh. good one. Yeah. What about Hitman? Yeah. I mean, Hitman's enormous in terms yeah. of content. Although the controller but was that's, rubbish. That's that's I'm, I'm sure that game's going to get updated when, with the new headset. And I wouldn't be surprised. And I've said this before as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Half Life Alex comes to PSVR two. Maybe not For as sure. a launch title, but maybe eventually. Yeah. Uh, it would totally make sense. You know, we, Valve have done it before. We have a lot mm -hmm. to be excited for, and that's yeah, definitely. The, the sure. thing is, if anyone's been on on the hype train since early on, like being on the hype train, is for me half the fun. Like I do yeah. like I don't like leaks really, but I really love like when you get this drip fed news and you yeah. can get excited about it and you can dream about it. It's that again, it's it's being the kid hoping for Christmas, and I'm glad we've got yeah. something in 2022 we can look forward to. And I think that right now, like. This announcement is timed because PlayStation is starting to send out these controllers to devs and they don't want them to be leaked. They want to handle the, exactly. the, the press around it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that's smart on their behalf. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't the, know, maybe they'll get I've... a leaked headset or maybe they'll do the similar sort mm -hmm. of tactic with the headset. Hmm. The, the, the thing that I've months. always applauded like PlayStation 4 is like the, the diversity in their games, I think, that they've always done. You had like, you know, platformers like Astrobot, but you also had like really different things like for example static i still haven't seen a game, game like that uh you know hitting hitting one of the other stores and um uh how is it called again like that uh, that platformer with the audio experience i forgot the name of it now uh platformer with audio uh yeah i forgot I was to the say res infinite but that's not it no, no. Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was a platformer but space I, I space, uh, space Channel 5? <laughs> Please, <laughs> Please. But what, what I'm just trying to say is yeah. that it seems yeah. sometimes that PlayStation allows the developers to have a little bit more creative freedom into doing things that are different rather than just following the the kind of like success formula that we know will work like we yeah. see sometimes with the Oculus type. Yeah. It's funny you mention that because we, me and Nathie jumped into a clubhouse yeah, exactly uh, the same this thing week we, uh, um, said, and yeah. we were talking about puzzling places, you know, that's on Oculus App yeah. Lab. Yeah. It's just got approved for PlayStation Store, but it's still waiting exactly. for approval on the official Oculus Store, even though it's like a, a pretty well-known uh, application that's... from both SideQuest yeah. and App Lab. Um, yeah, so it, you're kind of right in that sense. That's a good example of an app that you know, has been approved on PlayStation, but it's still waiting to be approved on the Oculus Store. One, and it's kind of like a hidden gem, you know? Yeah, and on, on that same track, Mike, um, one thing that differentiates the PlayStation platform, even for PSVR, right, even back in the day, is their QA system, their quality assurance. They do not allow, you know, like, it's like the frame drop, the low lag in performance. I, I had it as somebody who always has had kind of a medium tier PC, and I kind of stick to that. Sometimes you'll have a game that's poorly optimized on PC because they don't have the same kind of benchmarks or submission standards. And although Oculus have done a fair amount of work in that space over the last three years, I would say, say Sony's like quality process really does shine and you feel it. It's so easy to hop into a game. Take, for example, No Man's Sky. Yes, it's really low fidelity because PlayStation VR isn't great. But does it run at 90? Yeah, it flat runs at 90. It's beautiful, never hitches. You know what I mean? That's the difference you get in that platform. So if you want to play something smooth that really does immerse you and you can just kind of, again, be in your bubble space, mm -hmm. PlayStation has always been a really safe home. So I hope that they keep their standards. I know they're exacting. I know it's tough for developers from all the developer friends that I have. Sony QA is, is quite difficult and a bit of a pain in the ass, but I hope they keep those standards because I want to see that on PSVR too. 
Well, uh, just just something else. I think that there is one secret trick that they will be able to really uh, market with, and that is how you share your VR experiences yeah. with people from the outside. And that's not only the family on the couch watching, yeah. but it's also when you share something to YouTube, to Twitch, to wherever you want, because there is still no one who has nailed that. Like we know about this because we have to really try hard every time to get you some footage. It's not easy. It's also not hard, but it's it's just not consumer friendly. Let's say it like that. Mm -hmm. But if they can create something where I don't know, you, they they use the cameras in ways we haven't seen before. They do mixed reality, or I don't know. Like I'm just doing some wild guesses. That could really work because <laughs> if if things get shared on social media with VR, they do explode and people find it very and interesting. PlayStation is a, is a really easy. The whole one button sharing streaming thing is yeah, really something VR that for sure. they yeah. had it before Steam had it. They had it before other platforms had it. The one button share. They talked about the create button, I think is what they referred to it as in the post, that one of the controllers will have that. I, I'll tell you what I might ask is. It's, very, it's a lot lower down than what Nathie's asking for. A 16 by 9 frame. Can I please have yeah, my no, outcry? Yeah, not well, in a, also, also live stream wise, where there is a chat popping up in ways. But I'm just so saying, like the, they did that with PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was very, same. yeah, but it was very basic. What I'm it saying is, basic, it, yeah. it's going to be more interactive and maybe yeah. customizable or something. Yeah, just give give yeah. give creators a little bit more because the power of sharing is incredibly impactful when it comes it's, to it's sales. It's half of the it's half the advertisement for VR. Yeah. yeah. As you can probably tell, we're pretty excited about PSVR. Yes. <laughs> yes that, 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 that's, news is, item is it, one. <laughs> How long so are we in? An hour in. Let's spoiler move, spoiler let's alert, move. we were excited. <laughs> so let, let's move on. But I think it's great for the industry. You know, Quest yeah. is dominating right now. This is oh. on the horizon. It's very, very good time for us all. So we, we yes. all have a lot to be happy about right now, I think. Uh, because, you know, even if you're just interested in Quest, you know, I just want to reiterate this, that this will be good for you anyway in the long run, even if you're interested in buying PSVR, PlayStation. Anyone developing in the VR ecosystem and, and the word getting out there is good for the industry, so.